Dr. Randy W. Fulbright. I'm your instructor here on the faculty here at Grace Bible College. And we're going to be starting off with the uh, great doctrines of the Bible. And uh, by William Evans, and you can get that book uh, at the uh, at any Bible bookstore, or order it online, if you, if you will, however you want to do that, whatever's convenient for you. So uh, I'm going to get started here. I have uh, approximately 50 minutes with you folks on this class. This will go uh, a total of 12 weeks this class will go. And the very first things that I'm going to start off with, with of course, is the uh, going through some things uh, at first and uh, you'll need your Bible the test will will be uh, of course uh, uh, for you the, the test and so forth will be for you uh, uh, I will let you know what you'll have on your test it is an open book test and your textbook is of course besides great doctrines of the Bible is the Word of God, the King James 1611. Amen. Which is your sword. And we need to be carrying our sword with us, or, or if you will, our M 1611 and be firing off shots. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, but I'll say your textbook. Paul said, uh, told, uh, told him, said to bring me the books, but especially the parchments, but especially the parchments. Bring the books, but especially, especially the par parchments. Now, the Bible College's verse is, happens to be 2 Timothy 2.15. It is required that you memorize that verse, study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needeth not be ashamed rightly to find the word of truth, and therefore plowing a straight line, a straight furrow. On the Greek. Amen. <clears throat> now, start off with uh, there is in your book uh, a basic uh, in the Great Doctrines of the Bible, William Evans, and uh, one of the things is uh, an outline. Now, I'm going to kind of briefly give that to you. Now, this, of course, the class is the doctrine of God, theos, theos in the Greek. But the existence of God will be the first one. It'll be part one. And then subtitle under that, uh, of course, the existence of God versus atheism. And I'll cover some things there. One subtitle is assumed by the scriptures. Two proofs of the existence of God. Now, under that subtitle, A, Universal Belief in the Existence of God. I'll try to go slow enough that you can write this down, but those uh, that order online or by or studying, getting your class, classes and credit hours through DVD, you're able to stop and pause, which is a real nice feature there if uh, you want to get it that way, get the DVD. B would be cosmological argument with cause. That would uh, be B. C would be tele, tele, all of the teleological uh, argument from design. And ontological argument with being, O-N-T-O, logical. And uh, E, anthropological, anthropos in the Greek, man, moral ar argument, and argument from congruity. And then G, argument from scripture. Now, that's one, Roman number one. Now, Roman number two would be the nature of God versus. versus agnosticism subtitled the spirit spirituality of God versus materialism 
the personality of God versus pantheism. Three, the unity of God versus polytheism. Four, the trinity versus unitarianism. Roman numeral three, the attributes of God. One, the nature or natural attributes. Subtitle A, omniscient. B, omnipotence. C, omnipresence. D, eternity or the eternal God. Two, the moral attributes of God. His holiness, His righteousness, that's A and B. C, faithfulness, D, mercy and loving kindness, and E, love. God is love. But God is holy. And God's holiness, He said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. For it is written, Be ye holy. Be it, it is written. And God is holy. And 81 times the holiness of God is mentioned in just in the book of uh, Leviticus. And uh, we need to uh, walk according to His Word. To, for God is light. And if we walk in light as He is light, we have fellowship with one another. If there's sin in our life, then therefore there's no fellowship. Sonship never changes, but fellowship can change. Even uh, five minutes later, 15 minutes later, Amen. All it takes is someone to pull out in front of you, you driving down the road. Amen. And uh, I'm sure some folks never go through that problem. They still want to cut somebody. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to deal with the doctrine of God, the existence of God, and I mentioned just a moment ago, he's just writing an outline versus atheism. Now, you will see some of these on the test and what is a what is an atheist now by definition atheism is the disbelief of the existence existence of a god or supreme intelligent being now there's no such thing as an atheist even though they'll argue about something they don't believe exists i don't totally understand that but Atheism is a ferocious system that leaves nothing above us to excite awe, nor around us to awake tenderness. Now, Rob, Rob Hall, Robert Hall, had made that comment, but an atheist in degree, um, one who disbelieves the existence of a God, of a supreme intelligent being, an atheist is an atheistical disbelieving or denying the being of a supreme God, impious, in other words, they're impious. Now, I'm going to quote, read some scripture. Now, you can write these scriptures down if you like, and we're going to go to Psalms 14, verse 1. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable, abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did uh, understand and see God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now notice, the fool have said in his heart. Well, you're not supposed to say uh, someone's a fool. Well, in the scriptures, not as man looks at the word fool, simply means a lack of understanding of God. Paul made it real clear in Romans chapter 3, verse 9, and I'm going to read some of those verses of Scripture, but that those this is a reference to that. Paul was quoting Psalms 14, verses 1 through 4, when he said, What then, Romans 3, 9, What then? Are we better than they? No. Now he's talking about the Jews. Are we better than they? Are Gentiles better than the Jews? He said, No. He said, no, in no wise, for we have before proved, both proved, both Jew and Gentiles, that, uh, that they are all under sin, for there is none, for as, as, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. 
for he is a fool. That's what the word means in the scripture. It means lack of an understanding of a supreme holy God. This is an atheist. This is the definition of the atheist. So it says, the Lord looked down from heaven, right? Amen. And there was none that did understand or see God. Now, you take an atheist, he don't even believe one exists, but he's going to argue that there isn't one. How do you argue, as I said before, previously, how can you argue about something that don't exist? Doesn't make sense at all. Even though I did challenge someone who was a, a college student and proved to him that the scripture was true and that he was created in the similitude of God. I said, put your hand there in that door and I'm going to put, you know, slam it on your hand. And I said, I guarantee you, all your philosophy classes you had at the University of Kentucky, you will not say, oh, Buddha. He said he was a Satanist. He believed in the creation, but he didn't believe in the creator. <laughs> Don't understand that. So I said, you won't say, oh, Confucius, oh, Buddha, oh, Satan. I said, the first thing that would come out of your mouth is because you are created. The first Adam was created in the image of God, and in his fallen state, Adam, Genesis 5, said that we're, we that he had children in his likeness, and so we are sinners. There's none righteous, no, not one. Amen? So, this is the atheist. Now, Assumed by the scriptures proofs of the existence of God. Here we have then now the universal belief in the existence of God. Uh, whether someone would say that, like an atheist would not, but argue against, but you have it tr in truth is that universally people believe there is a God or they may believe there tr a tree is a, their God. Which I'll, we'll get into some of that here in just a few minutes too. But the cosmological argument from cause is the cos cosmology is simply this the branch of philosophy dealing with the origin and general structure of the universe with its parts, elements, laws, and especially with such of its characteristics as space, time, casualty, and freedom. The branch, second, Twofold of this is the branch of astronomy that deals with the general structure and evolution of the universe. So they are in some parts of synonym or being synonymous would be cosmogenesis. That would mean the cosmos, the universe, everything, the cosmos was boom, big bang. No. <laughs> It takes more faith to believe that than it is to believe God's Word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and there is no argument there. There's no assumption there. Amen. So, another word is creation. How was it created? A big bang. It evolved. You have some who believe in they get their life force from rocks. Because God is a rock. He's all things. He's uh, the air. He's the trees. <laughs> Amen. That's right. As the student, one of the students said, Lord help him. Amen. Amen. Now the next point we're going to bring out is teleological and far as in philosophy of or relating to teleology, the philosophical doctrine that final causes. Uh, final cause design and purpose exist in nature. Teleology or finality is a reason or ex explanation for something in function of its end. Purpose or goal. It is derived from two Greek words. Telos means end, goal, or purpose. Logos meaning reason or explanation. A purpose that is opposed by human use, such as that of a fork, is called extrinsic. Natural teleology, uh, common in classical philosophy but controversial today, contends that natural entities 
also have intrinsic pur purposes. In, in, irrespective of contents that natural entities have intrinsic in purposes, uh, humans use or opinion. For instance, Aristotle claimed that an acorn intrinsic intrinsic telos is become fully grown oak tree. We can trace the origin of te teleology to the Greeks to tele te teleos meaning complete and its root te tele telos meaning result, the end result. Then we add the sophistology, which means logic or reasoning. The philosophy itself suggests that the acts are done with the foregone purpose in mind. People do, do things knowing the result they wish to achieve. And as Aristotle Star, uh, said, nature does nothing in vain. <laughs> Okay, well, the scriptures teach that there will be a new heaven and a new earth, amen, and it will be destroyed by fire and brimstone, and that uh, the curse fell upon, you know, earth because of man, and the earth is groaning, with groaning, for, a, the, you know, creation is groaning, it says Romans chapter uh, eight, you know, uh, four, eight, yes, in hope, uh, looking for an expected end for a new heaven and a new earth, and we are growing as well. Those are believers born again, and a new body, and also a new home, a new heaven and a new earth. Ontological is the next one, argument from being of or relating to ontology, uh, ontology, ontology technically, the branch of metaphysics that studies the nature of existence or being as such. Metaphysics, physical, things that have to do with the nature of, of being are ontological, ontological, like the ontological question about the Loch Ness monster. Do we have uh, to prove in order for something to exist? The study of being is called uh, uh, ontology. So an ontological argument might investigate whether God or people, for that matter, really exist. <laughs> oh, goodness. I exist. That's for sure. Cut. I feel me. This is matter. It's solid. Amen. Now, anthropology, that is the science that deals with the origin, physical, and cultural development, biological characteristics, and social customs and beliefs of uh, humankind. I think the study is called sociology. I believe that's what the actual study is. And the state of human beings, similarly, uh, similar, uh, similarity to and divergence uh, from other animals. Now, it says in Genesis that he created Adam and Eve, and then he created the beast, the animal kingdom, after their kind. So I'm not half human and half animal. Even though there is an animal characteristics, as in I have flesh and bones and blood, that's the the beast bestial end of that. But I also have a spirit and soul, spirit, soul, and body. First Thessalonians five twenty three. Now the argument from congruity. Congruity simply means the state or quality of being congruous. All right, uh, harmony. Uh, appropriateness, a congruity of ideas, the state or quality of being geometrically congruent, a point of agreement. In other words, a point of agreement, we're in agreement about it. Right? That is congruity in agreement. Now, it says, can two walk together except they agree? As in Israel and God, Jehovah, can two walk together except they agree? Yes, they'll have to be in agreement to walk together. 
just as a husband and wife, just like in anybody else in, in a relationship of any kind, whether it's in business or anything. Uh, we were talking earlier before the class about uh, someone and and about how they were seeing some someone or dating someone who was not saved. And the other was saved and so these two cannot walk together because they're not in agreement. They're not to be equally yoked. They would, would be, if they did yoke together, they would be a house divided against this section. So in agreement, this is congruity, being in agreement. Amen. And a house divided against itself will not stand. The Lord said so. Scholastic, you know, uh, scholastically, merit bestowed as a divine gift rather than earned. Now I can understand that. Our salvation is by grace through faith that not ourselves. It is a gift of God. But in rewards and crowds, they are merit. Number two, Roman number two, the nature of God versus agnosticism. Now, agnostic simply means a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God or of anything beyond material phenomena. A person claims neither faith nor disbelief in God. They're skeptic. They're not atheists. They are agnostic. In other words, simply putting it, they have to be shown to be believed. He said, well, I'll believe with what I see it. I'm sure folks have heard that before. I'll believe it when I see it. A doubter. This is synonymous with it. Remember doubting Thomas? Everybody remember doubting Thomas? Well, if I see, can thrust my hand into a side to, to the, the nail wounds, not scars, nail wounds in his hand. Uh, I will not believe. And so, but he seen him. He said, touch me. Matter, real. The bodily resurrection of the Lord. Touch me. For a spirit hath not flesh and bone. Now notice, flesh and bone didn't say flesh and blood because his blood had been applied to the mercy seat. And he fell on his knees and said, my Lord and my God, and he said, Blessed are those who believe in us. Amen. Doubting Thomas, he sent a cynical, if you will, to someone who's agnostic. He basically an unbeliever. You either believe or you don't. It's an absolute. So, non believer, rationalist, I'll try to rationalize it. Amen. A person who holds the view that any ultimate reality, such as God, is unknown and probably unknowable. Probably one who is not committed to believing in either the existence or the non-existence of God or a God. Agnostic. We just exist. We die. And so. <laughs> Sad. And those who are believed like that, as Paul said that those in 1 Corinthians that didn't believe in the resurrection, they were men most miserable. Amen. We are, we are eternal beings created. And, of course, we'll be getting that to some of that here in just a minute, but creating the similitude of God. Now, number one, under that spiritual of that number two, Roman number two, two that you wrote down, under that spirituality of God versus materialism. Now, we just covered of those who believe that there's not material to be, whether God exists or whether anything exists materially, whether I exist, you exist, anybody exists, it's not real. I know when I run into the door at night, when it's dark, it's real. Because <laughs> it hurts. Now, materialism, in definition, a tendency to consider material possessions and physical comfort as more important than spiritual, spiritual values. Oh, goodness. 
Do we not see that today? The Lord made it very, very clear in that in materialism. Uh, he said, you could not serve God in man. You cannot serve riches. You will fall into divers lust. Amen. Uh, if any man be risen in Christ, he's a new creature. I mean, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature now. He said, uh, if you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ has the right hand of the Father, not all the things on the earth. But what profit of man gained the whole world is his own soul? So all this that we see materially, uh, financially, in any way, anything material that others, the, that group of people that don't believe nothing is, it's not real, uh, then it's going to vanish. It's not going to be here. Now, materialists, uh, they, they are, as they would say in business, money motivated. Uh, they want to, to make money, 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 money. Uh, as the pastor at Grace Baptist Church, you know, he said that Rockville, he was talking about how much money is enough. It's not. Got to make something more. Got to make more money. Enough. And it says in Proverbs that in 31, and just like a fire, you can keep throwing something in the fire and keeps burning up. It's not enough. That fire can't get enough. Keep it. The materialist is the same way, a tendency to consider material possessions physical and physical comfort as uh, uh, more important than spiritual values. Now, the philosophy behind materialism is the doctrine that nothing exists except matter and its movements and modification, the opposite of the other. A doctrine that only or the highest values or objectives lie in the material being, well-being, and in the furtherance of material progress. Desire for possessions, uh, Utility, utility, utilitarians is one thing. Uh, businessism, physics, material things. You've got to get material things. Once you get it, you're still not happy. It's materialism. Now, when I was saved, I got all I need. He's all. Amen. Amen. There's nothing physical that makes me happy. And so uh, I want to walk even as he walked, and he became poor that we may become rich. Amen. For he said, Foxes have holes, bir holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man have a place to lay his head. This is a temporary dwelling. In fact, he said, John 2, the shortest temple I will reign in three days. When he took him to uh, the empty tomb, his visage was so marred more than any man. His visage was so marred, he didn't look human. But he rose. Now, we're talking about beauty and glory. Amen. And he's beautiful. Now, the personality of God, this is under the, of course, sub of that one, is two, the personality of God versus pantheism. Now, the doctrine of pantheism is the doctrine that God is the transcendent reality of which the material universe and human beings are only manifestations. It involves a denial of God's personality and expresses a tendency to identify God in nature. In other words, God is a person. God the Father is a person. God the Son is a person. God the Holy Ghost is a person. They have feelings. 
Amen. They are persons. And these three are one. Now we're dealing with now the doctrine of God and Theos, the, God, the doctrine of God the Father. And of course, uh, the next quarter, we'll actually be dealing with the, uh, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Christology, if you will, doctrine of Christology. And now we're on the doctrine of theology. And then when we get to the third person of the triune God, these three are one, for there are three that bear rec a record of heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Uh, baptizing them in the name, singular of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And <clears throat> when we get into then, it'll be the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, it's a doctrine of pneumatology, in the Greek spirit. Amen. And we have a spirit. Mm. Amen. So the doctrine that God is transcendent, reality of which the material universe and, and human beings are only man, manifestations, it involves a denial of God's personality and expresses a tendency to identify God in the nature. Any religious belief or philosophical doctrine that identifies God with the universe the stars is God. The moon is God. That tree is God. Now, I believe you can make material things in materialism and you can make them your God. Of some who do not believe, as we discussed earlier, that this ain't real. But I believe you can make your children your God make your job, you can make your money. You can even make your thoughts your God and you need to come. Cast down imagination. That's what Paul said what he did. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself above against, above the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. Therefore you make your thought life. You can make your philosophy your God. Amen. You make your TV. You can make uh, your food your God. If you anything you put before God, and it's called in anything you desire more, put before God. It says in Colossians, Colossians, it is covetous is idolatry, something excessively you want and put it before God. And I believe it was Job who said he desired his word more than necessary food. Amen. Because bread, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. In pantheism, a person who does not believe in an orthodox religion, he's agnostic as we cover. He's atheist as we know cover. He's a doubter. Amen. Free thinker. He's a heathen, in other words. He's a heretic. Amen. These are synonymous words. He's an idolater. He's an infidel. He's a polytheist. He's a scoffer. He's skeptic. He's an unbeliever. He's an idolist. He's a paganist. Amen. Just a pantheist. Now, number three, now we've got cover one, two, three. Now, number three, one was the, you know, uh, the materialism, and then pantheism, and then the, of course, now we're into uh, polytheism. Now, this right here, number three, polytheism, is simply the doctrine of or belief in more than one God or in many gods. Amen? Which is agnostic, which is atheist. <laughs> Amen. Now, number four, the Unitarianism. We're talking Trinity versus now the unity of God versus polytheism, and there is one God. Uh, the Trinity versus Unitarianism, and I quoted it just a minute for their street of our record: Heaven, the Father, the Lord, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Amen. It's amazing. How that in biblical numerology, how the God deals with three. He rose on the third day. Amen. 
There's earth, water, and air, but there's one earth. There is the eggshell, the clear, and the yolk, but there's one egg. We are spirit, soul, body, but we're one person. Amen. It's Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Amen. Unitarianism is simply a person, especially a Christian, who asserts the unity of God and rejects the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, I've heard years ago, we, I was saying with a gospel group named Gateway, and we, there was one gentleman, he was Jesus only. And I believe that Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead, the triune God bodily. I believe it's Jehovah Witnesses believe that we, as Christians, believe that there's three gods. We worship three gods. These three are one. Amen. But try you. It's hard to grasp. Like H2O. H2O, you can have liquid, still H2O. You can have steam, still H2O. You can have ice, still H2O. Amen. Three points. Universalism. The doctrine that em emphasizes the universal fatherhood of God and the final salvation of all souls. <laughs> uh, except ye be born again, ye cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. John 3, 3 and 5. I can only be born physically one time. I can only be born again one time. And Nicodemus said, can I enter back in my mother's womb and be born again? That would be reincarnation, wouldn't it? <laughs> Amen. Now, in the study, this is not in the way of heavens, uh, great doctrines of the Bible. My time is getting short here. And so, uh, and I'm going to try to say this, apocatastasis. Now, the origin goes back to 1670 and 1680, during that period of 10, 10 years of setting up again. And when I read this, I fell, about fell off my chair in the office, in my study, where I study, you know, the Word and and uh, get, you know, preparate or prep, uh, preparation or prepping classes for the Bible college to be recorded. But this doctrine really, really hung me up. And it was the state of being restored or reestablished uh, restitution. That's one, the first pole of it. It's two poles. But the second pole is the doctrine that Satan and all sinners will ultimately be restored to God. Therefore, we don't have to give account for sin, so let's live like it's 1999. The Bible said, For all have sinned come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, none not one. There's none good, none not one. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift, I like the word, that conjunction, conjunction there, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as next uh, next class, we'll be covering the attributes of God. Of course, you know uh, uh, the different uh, the moral attributes and you know of God, and also His holiness and righteousness, and we'll be covering that as well. And then we'll get into further into the meat, if you will, into the study of the doctrine of God, and that will conclude the class. Uh, before, first class here on the top of God. So uh, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name we do thank you, Lord. We pray that the eyes of our understanding, those who are sitting under the sound of our voice, those who are studying your eternal word, that they will uh, grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord. If there's some that's Sitting under the sound of my voice has never tasted of your good grace, never come to a saving knowledge that Christ 
died for their sins and was buried and rose the third day according to the scriptures, that they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and call upon you and that they would acknowledge that they are sinners and plead for your mercy and pray, be merciful unto me a sinner, save me by your grace. Lord, we love you and praise you. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh.